Hi everyone, my name is Amy with Eating Healthy, Spinning Less. And in today's video, I'm going to break down August's budget for you. I'm gonna show you my real numbers of what I budget and also show you my cash envelope system and how it works for me every month. So there are seven key principles that I do every month when I am setting up my budget. And number one is I need to know what's happening this month. So get out your planner. This is what I do. And I open up to the month and I just look through what's going on. Well, I know this month school is starting. I need to have a budget for school supplies, anything that my kids need. For instance, my oldest daughter needs some new tennis shoes, some athletic tennis shoes, so I need a budget for that. Also, it's my husband's birthday. We're going out of town twice this month, up to Fresno to visit family, and then we're also going to Hurricane Harbor twice before school starts because we have season passes. So these are all things that I need to be budgeting for, but I would forget, friends, if I didn't get out my planner and look to see what was happening. The second key principle is I need to write out my budget. I need to physically write it out and look at the numbers, make sure it all adds up, make sure I can afford everything I want to buy or want to spend. And this is kind of the longest process because I like to do it alone and then I take it to my husband and I say, okay, I need you to look this over. And then he looks it over. And a lot of times there are changes I need to make based off of what he has reminded me of or things that he has caught that he thinks we need to adjust. So it is definitely a team effort, but I do take the lead because I want to, I love to. And he gladly hands over those reins to me but it's still a team. We are still working together. And throughout the whole month, we are working together on the budget, staying on budget, not using the debit card when we shouldn't be, not going over budget, talking over uh, expenses together. And then we don't ever fight about money. It's a wonderful teamwork effect that I highly recommend every married couple do. So now I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to write out my August budget for you. Now I am not going to include our total income for the month. I'm also not going to show you all of the expenses on our bills, but what I want to mostly show you is our cash envelope expenses and things that we are saving up for. And the reason why I don't wanna show our income, because I know everybody asks me, can you just tell me how much you guys make? I wanna know what you're living on. Well, I'm not going to do that because that is so personal. And I have family and friends that watch these videos and I just don't really want to do that. But this is what I will tell you. My husband is a teacher in California, a high school teacher. We do receive some stipends on our adopted kids. That goes towards our total overall budget and our children are very aware of that. They know that that money goes towards our expenses. They know that they have everything they need. We do lots of fun family adventures. We bought season passes to Six Flags this year. So they know so much about my budget and I'm gonna to talk to you more about kids and budgeting. Maybe that can give you a little glimpse into our income without me physically coming out and sharing. I also make money on my YouTube channel and on my blog and working with different companies. And that has been a big blessing to our family because anything that I make on my blog goes towards family adventures. Enough about my family's income. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you our August budget. Okay, so here we go. At the top of the paper, I always write August budget. Right below this is where I put our income. So I list Troy, what he's making this month, and everything else. Then I put the total. Now, this, is, this part is not going to apply to everybody, but we pay tithe every month to our church. 
So I subtract our tithe money and then I have a new total. This is what we go off of for our budget for the month. So any online bills that I pay for the month, I write out right here. And it typically goes all the way down and then I write some more because <laughs> it seems like we have a lot of online bills that we pay. This includes mortgage, utilities, anything that we're putting in savings, um, whatever we're paying for online. I have things for my business that I have to pay for. It all goes right here. And then on this side, Cash. This is the most important side because I can easily pay my bills online, no problem. But this is where the budget tends to waver. This is where you will either go over budget or stick to your budget. If you don't pull cash for your groceries, gas, and things like that, you um, have to be very careful because if you ever go in the red, and you're not pulling cash, then you might wanna start pulling cash. <laughs> cash has prevented us from going into the red for years now, and I love it. So groceries this month, I've decided that our grocery budget will be $600. It was 550 last month, which was fine because we had a huge garden, but our garden is dwindling and we're getting ready for fall. So. I upped it by $50. I think that's reasonable and 600 is our budget. Gas. Gas in California is well over $5 a gallon, sometimes almost $6 a gallon. So because we're going out of town, it's 800 and that makes me so sad. <laughs> My husband, he gets a cash allowance, and I know that sounds childish, but it works for us. He loves it. He loves getting his cash. He uses it for anything he wants to spend it on, including gas for his car. This is gas only for my car. I have the family car. We drive it all the time. He is very close to work, and so he doesn't need a lot of gas money, so he uses this for gas and anything else he wants to spend it on. And then I get $50. That is my personal spending money for the month. Bayou is our dog. So if I need to buy any dog food or if he needed a vaccine of any sort, this would go towards his fund. And I have an envelope that I'll show you here in a little bit. Car repair. Every month we put money in an envelope for oil changes or anything. My husband needs something done on his car. I'm not quite sure because I don't know a lot about cars, but we have money in the envelope for it and I love it. So we always put $50 in that envelope. Birthdays. This month we're putting $50. I have a niece who's having a birthday and my husband's birthday. And so that should cover some gifts. Amazon. I put $10 in an envelope every month for our Amazon membership. It's $120 a year and by December I have $120 to pay for it. Now for Christmas I typically only add 100, whoops I just made a mistake. I typically add $100 a month but we have decided to take our kids on an experience this year. They will not be receiving any Christmas gifts from us. It's going to be much pricier than just our normal Christmas budget. So I'm putting 200 a month in that envelope right now. For clothing this month, I am adding $100 because I know I need to buy my daughter a pair of tennis shoes. And I think my son might need a couple new shirts for school. $100 should do that. Co-pays. Anytime we go to the doctor, we pay a $20 copay. So I put $40 in and that accrues each month. Sometimes we don't go to the doctor. So $40 is what we put in every month. For any household cleaning products or personal care products, toilet paper, paper towels, anything that we need to buy 
is a separate budget from our grocery budget. And so this month I put $80 in there. School supplies. So for school supplies, we are only budgeting $40. And that is because we save all of our school supplies from the year prior. So each year we have a little bucket with all of our school supplies that we pick from and it's really not that expensive to do. Pool supplies. My husband needed to get some pool supplies for our little uh, above ground pool and so it was $100 so I went ahead and put that in the budget. And then anything else. <laughs> so I've decided to create a gallery wall on um, in down a hallway and so we are budgeting 300 that might seem like a lot but I also printed out all the pictures that I have not been printing out lately and so I actually printed a thousand pictures kind of a big budget for that but I got caught up and that's what I'm thankful for so this is all of our cash envelopes for the month I got out my trusty calculator here, but I'm actually going to show you what I do. Some of these categories I don't need to pull cash for, like photos, because I actually already have done that and I've already spent it. So I went ahead and pulled it previously to making this video. And so I'm just going to um, check it off that it's already been fulfilled. Also the same with pool supplies for my husband. We already did that this weekend. So I don't need to pull these. School supplies. I don't need to pull $40 because I already had $40 left over in another envelope that I used. So I'm checking that off saying that I don't need to pull the $40. So this is all that I needed to pull cash for. Okay, so now I'm just going to add all of these up and determine how much cash I need to pull from the bank this month. Okay, so the total is $2,280. Now, one thing you might be saying is, Amy, that's a lot of money. I would never pull that kind of money out of the bank. I would never have that much cash on me. And I don't, I don't carry that much cash on me. We have a very protected spot that we keep it in to keep it safe. I am not worried about our cash. The other thing that I wanted to explain real quick is that we get paid around the same time of the month which is the beginning of the month. So I don't have income that's filtering through uh, our bank account various times of the month. It all just kind of hits within the same few days of each other. And so I am able to budget on a monthly basis. So I can budget for the whole month like this, go pull my cash one time, filter it all into its various envelopes and be done. I understand that not everyone is able to do that. and we weren't always able to do that but prior to my husband becoming a school teacher he worked for a hospice company and it was an every other week paycheck so i know how to budget that way and if you need to write down all of your bills on a calendar you can print out just a blank calendar i'll put a link for you down below write out all of your bills when they are due write out the dates that you get paid and Estimate low on how much you get paid because I know a lot of you have variable uh, incomes. So write out what your income is. And then that gives you a visual for what income can pay for what, how much cash you can pull when, and then you can stay in your budget. So number three is to give every dollar a purpose. So let's say you write out your bills, you write out your expenses, and you still have some money left over in your income. Maybe it's only $50, maybe it's $1,000. Give that money a purpose. Don't just let it sit in your bank account. That is the worst thing you can do because I promise you the next time you go shopping or the next time you go to buy that two or three items at the store, you're going to be tempted to overspend and to buy things that you weren't planning to buy because you know you have leftover money just sitting in your bank account. No, you want to give every single dollar a purpose. That way you don't overspend. You're actually meeting your savings goals or you're paying off debt and you're doing something. You're doing something greater than just 
frivolously spending your money at the store. Number four is to always include a buffer. You never want to zero out your budget to absolutely zero without having some money in your bank account for unforeseen charges. So I always have to have a buffer in my bank account just in case there's an unforeseen expense. It's important to always have a bit of a buffer. We always have a $100 buffer in our account just in case because we never want to go in the red and pay a penalty. Now it's the fun part. I get to go to the bank and pull my cash. So that's number five. It's time to get ready and I need to figure out how many 20s I need, how many 50s do I need? And I need to figure all that out so when I get to the bank, I can say, I need this many 10s, this many 20s, this many 50s, and this many 100s. And then I'm prepared for the month. So here's how I do that. Next to each expense, I need to write out what bills I want to pull for that category. So for groceries, I'm going to pull 12 50s. For gas, I will pull 16 50s. For Troy's money, I will pull 5 50s. 150, 150, <laughs> keeps going. 110, two 100s, pull two 50s for the clothing, two 20s and four 20s. Then up here, I will put, we'll just put it right here because there's room. 10s, 20, 50, 100s. So I need one 10, six 20s, 39 50s, and two 100s. So then next to this, I'll put 10, 120, 19 50, and 200. I will add these up. and I got a total of 2280. So now what I do is I take a picture of this on my phone. So I don't take this to the bank. I just take a picture. And then when I get to the bank, I show the lady the picture. So she's able to see, okay, she wants 110, six 20s and so forth. And then instead of having her count out the cash to 2,280, I just say, could you just count the amount of bills? So she'll go, one, two, and then she counts to 39 for the 50s, the six for 20s, and the 110. And that is how I get my cash from the bank. Yesterday, I went to the bank and I pulled all of my cash. And so here it is, here's $2,280. And I am going to now fill my envelopes and my sinking fund binder. Now, let me show you what a sinking fund binder is. This binder is from Hobby Lobby. You can also get them on Amazon. And it just has envelopes in here for specific purposes. So these are savings for specific purposes. These are not huge savings accounts like I would have online. I do have savings accounts online. Each of my kids have a savings account. We put money in for, for a car and their wedding. We also have savings accounts for braces. We have our emergency fund. There's all kinds of savings accounts online. These are for smaller expenses that we are saving up for. Okay, so I'm gonna start filling my envelopes. But before I do, I want to tell you number seven, and that is get your kids involved. So recently on Instagram, I said that I was not buying my kids all these new school supplies, and one mom messaged me and said, how do your kids feel about that? I mean, aren't they bummed? I, I would have been so bummed as a kid if my mom hadn't bought me new school supplies. And I said, well, when you get your kids involved in your budget and when you explain all of this to them and they know where your money is going, they're not going to beg you for certain things. My kids don't beg me for school supplies. They know how it works. They know that I have $40 set aside for school supplies. 
They know we have a bucket full of school supplies from last year that we pick from. And we did buy some new things, of course. But when you get your kids involved in your budget, it makes a huge difference on how they see things. When they go to the store, they don't go, Mommy, I want that. Mommy, I want that. And they're not begging me. They know. When we go to the store, often I have my kids hold the grocery list and they help me check things off as we are buying our groceries. Now, my kids are kids. So I do have one child that has said, I just really want a new pencil box. And I said, well, we have three here to choose from. So if you wanna spend your own money to buy a pencil box, you can, but I am not buying a pencil box because I already have three here that I can provide for you. And so they understand, they have ways of earning money. They don't get an allowance. They don't get money for doing chores. I don't get money for doing chores. Chores are a necessity of our life that we do to keep our house running and they know that. But they have other ways where they can earn money that's extra. For instance, if I'm going to pay to go get my car washed, I'll ask a child, do you want to wash my car? And I will pay you the money that I would have paid if I were to go to a car wash. So there are ways that they do earn money. They earn money at my parents' house doing various chores that my parents don't want to do, like watering the fruit trees. And so there are always ways to earn money for them. We're having a garage sale next weekend so that they can earn some money on things that they want to sell. But they don't earn money just doing basic chores like helping me wash dishes and unload, reload the dishwasher or doing laundry. Those are things that they need to know how to do. And those are ways that they can help contribute to our family and keep our family home running smoothly. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's important to get your kids involved in your budget. When they know the numbers, when they know the expectation, then they have an appreciation and they have a respect for where the money is going. All of the weight of the finances should never fall on the mom's shoulders. It needs to be a family experience because when you do that, you are raising kids that will one day be adults and they need to know how to budget. Would you go ahead and go through these envelopes and take out any change and put them in this jar? Because we're gonna reset our envelopes for the month. Okay, so let's start filling the envelopes. If you'll put, we need $600 for groceries. So that's 1250s. Okay, so we need to break that to up. To 100 for each week and the rest in bulk foods. So it's 400. Yeah. And then paper clip each week together. Okay. So there'll be five paper clips total in groceries. Okay. okay. And check that off and then I'll do gas. So 1650s. Okay, so next we have car repair and that goes in our sinking fund. And here's our envelope. And so do you wanna put that in? Also in our sinking funds is birthday. So we'll be adding a 50 if you wanna find that. Okay, for clothes, we're doing 100 this month. So if you'll put that in. Co-pays, 40, household, 80, and we are done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how I budget for August and every other month as well. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and like this video that tells me that you like content like this and you'd like to see more of it. I love making YouTube videos all about handcrafted recipes using fresh ingredients and everyday living. And don't forget, this girl right here is on a budget. I will see you all in my next video, friends. Bye-bye.